All right, so putting the printer together should be pretty simple. So let's grab our user manual. Pretty cool Creality stickers and the manual itself. So Creality usually does a great job with manuals. So here it shows us and tells us what each part is called. And it is multi-language actually. It's English and Chinese looks like at once. Here are all the parameters of the printer. Parts list and step one of the installation which is number four here and we're going to be installing the gantry to the base with these four bolts M545s. I'll go underneath the base to the upper portion. Now before you do anything you might want to make sure that your base is flat so if yours is wobbling try pushing down on it to level it out and there are a couple bolts on each side or I guess one on this side and two on that that are supporting braces that you could loosen and that should flatten it out and then tighten them up but yeah just usually pushing on it will flatten it out so if we go to the side here a bit maybe you guys can see but we have like this little cutout here and this is where the gantry or the upper portion will sit just like that with the motors pointing to the back so it kind of snugly fits in there so be careful to have some plugs and stuff so yeah we're just gonna land right in there so we need to grab our bolts and there are four of them and there'll be two on each side that go from underneath and to the channel so I'm gonna use a spool to prop it up and you can go off the edge of the table or something however you gotta do it to reach underneath you can even hold it as long as you're careful but propping it up like this usually works pretty good and now I'm just gonna grab a bolt and go underneath and start it from here so yeah it's not too difficult guys just everything's a little large and wobbly at this point and we're gonna need our largest wrench and now I'm just gonna run them down until they get snug so not going to tighten them yet just kind of run them down because we need to do the other side also so let's flip around and we'll do the same thing here Make sure you're sitting down completely on the channel because there's like a groove that it falls into before you tighten this. But don't tighten the bolts yet completely, just kind of run them down. And the reason for that is because we want to run our X axis here on the Z all the way down. And so I'm just going to grab this belt and just turn it and that's going to make it go down. And I want to go all the way down. And the reason for that is because we want the spacing here between all these rollers to be as close as possible. So even though everything here looks to be adjusted pretty well and everything seems to line up, we still want the offset between these two channels to be as close as possible between all these rollers because this is where the hot end will spend most of its time in this range here. And so now we can go back underneath and tighten those bolts up. You want to tighten these up pretty snugly, but nothing crazy because we do still have braces that will help with the stabilization. Now we can go to the other side and tighten these. And that's how the gantry connects to the base. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna be installing the braces, which are called the pull rods on each side of the printer from the base to the top of the gantry. So we're gonna need the two different kind of bolts and also the washers, which are all in this baggie. And that's all of our hardware. So we got two washers and then two longer bolts and two shorter bolts. The shorter bolts are gonna go up and the longer ones are gonna go down. And then our rods, you wanna make sure that in the middle here, they kind of split open, that they're tight. So tighten that up. And then on the ends, it doesn't matter which way's up, they're both the same. You're gonna have an eye bolt and also this nut here. So make sure it's all loose. Same thing on the other side. And we wanna go about halfway or so. We're gonna do the bottom first, which connects right here. And so we're gonna put our bolt through first, like that, and then our washer after that. So the washer is gonna go against the frame. So we're gonna take it and screw it in right here. And just like that, hopefully you guys can see that. And now we're gonna move to the top here and you guys can see that it's too short. So what we need to do is unscrew it a bit from the bottom and then also unscrew it from here a bit where it extends. So what you wanna do is you wanna perfectly align with that hole. And you guys probably can't see, but you want this hole and that hole to perfectly align. So that's perfect. Now I'm gonna grab the shorter bolt and that's gonna go through here. So at this point you want it to be loose. And not only loose, but quite important that your base is sitting flat. So make sure you're on a flat table. Because once you lock these in, that's gonna kinda lock the printer crooked or straight. So make sure your base is not wobbling, it's flat. And now we can tighten the bolts on the bottom and top. And so now that we're tight, now we need to lock them in with the nuts. So we're gonna run it all the way down and then use our wrench, 10 millimeter, to tighten it up. Not, not hard, just a little bit to lock it in. And same thing down here. And just like that, this side is on, and now we can do the other side. All right, so our supporting rods are on. For the next part, we're gonna install our hot end assembly onto the cradle here. 
So this is the x-axis that moves back and forth and our symbol here connects to it. And if you guys can see here on the side, there are three bolts that we need to take out. They're like partially unscrewed already. And that's where it's gonna mount right here. And so the way this goes on is pretty simple. And so this bolt right here that sticks out, it's gonna sit right on top right here. And hopefully you guys can see this, but it's literally gonna sit just like that. And it kind of falls in there and it sits and holds itself. So yeah, one, two, three little bolts we took out to put back in. So yeah, so far the assembly process has been pretty flawless and quite simple. So now we're just gonna snug them up, not too tight guys, just a little bit, and that should be good. And now our hot end assembly is on the x-axis. And so for the next part is going to be our spool holder, but before we do that, let's go ahead and do the screen, which is right after that, since we're already down here. And so it's gonna install right here, which is quite simple. All we gotta do is plug it in. So there's a piece of tape here we need to take off that reveals our plug and then the plug is going to plug in on the inside there you guys can see maybe a little hard to get to but not too bad so we're going to plug that in and now we're just going to line it up here on these nubs and then when it falls in we're going to go down and that's going to lock it in right here so yeah very nice i like how it flows with the printer all right so now going to the top and hopefully you guys can see the slide bars kind of in the way of this angle but yeah this spool holder will just literally clip on onto the channel down and so you want to have the spool part that rolls in line with your filament detector like this so the filament will flow out into the detector then down into the extruder and you want the detector to be about the middle of the channel so right where the creality logo is so the spool holder would be a little bit to the left side if you're looking at it from the front and so hopefully you guys can see but yeah we're just gonna kind of go into it like this and then just click it down simple as that and so it's kind of beside the logo and the filament detector should be right in the middle of where the logo is and so there's a little wire that comes out the channel on the back that's going to plug into the detector so let's go ahead and plug that in and just like that the spool holder is on and our filament will go here through the detector and then down to the extruder and so all we got left is plugging everything in and that's not too hard as it's pretty straightforward we got some wiring here and there's some tape we got to peel to release them and they're all gonna line up with each other so the black plugs go with the black and then this white plug is the z-axis motor so we can go ahead and plug that in so one of the black plugs is a double pin and the other is a triple and that's going to be our filament detector and led light and on this side we just have to plug in the z-axis motor which is quite simple so yeah that's all the wiring here on the bottom and it's quite important that they're not in the way of this knob here so if you have to like push it back in down into the hole the wiring so it kind of stays low and if we slide this across we can see that nothing's in the way and so we got this main ribbon cable that comes out the side and so this wire about midway has some wires and these are for the x-axis motor and end stop switch which are right here so this is the x end stop switch and the motor plugs underneath right here so pretty simple now here on the ribbon cable we can see there's a little picture and this is telling you that you can insert this into this bracket here which will hold it and you want to put it about right here where the sticker is and then the other end is going to go to our hot end assembly and if we can flip around here to the front you guys can see the wire goes through here and then into the assembly and so here it looks like we do need to take off this piece that this is the strain relief bracket so let's go ahead and do that so should be able to just take one bolt and rotate this so it kind of opens up if you guys can see here we got a couple tabs that we need to open and then our cable will plug in with a little nub to the back right down in there so once you line it up if you just push it down the tabs will kind of lock around it and hold it in and i think i put yeah i did i put this upside down so on the drawing the arrow pointing down actually goes the right side up so and now we can put this bracket back on so i'm just going to swivel it back and we'll put the bolt in there tighten it up on both sides and now our wire is somewhat strain relieved there so now we just need to check make sure it reaches both sides and looks like we're a little bit short here so we do need to go more this way so let's see how far it needs to go so the paper itself does need to go straight into the bracket and now we should be able to reach yep there we go no problem all the way to this end so most likely we'll never have to go this far but if it does it can still reach it is on a stretch here but should be fine and obviously it can go this way no issues so yeah that looks pretty good 
And so that is everything for the assembly process and plugging everything in. So I am pretty excited to power this thing up. But before we do that, we need to check a few things, which are rollers on the bed and the hot end and also our belt. And so we got three stationaries and then three adjustables on this side. And if we can move the printer here sideways, you guys can see the three adjustable rollers that are with eccentric nuts. So the eccentric nut is when you turn it, it makes the roller go farther and closer away. And so the way I like to check them is I stick my finger in there and I roll them. So the back one is completely loose, the middle one is very tight, and the front one is pretty much almost perfect. So the middle one needs to be loosened and the back one needs to be tightened up. So we're gonna use this open-ended wrench, 10 millimeters, to do that. So I'm gonna go for the middle one and try to loosen that up, whichever way that is. And there we go. So now we're good on the middle one. A little tight on the front one, so let's loosen that one. So good on the front, good on the middle, and still loose on the rear one. So I'm gonna see if I can tighten up that very back one. And so now we got some friction. Let's see how we feel like on all of them. So we need to double check everything. Okay, so the middle one is too loose now, so we need to tighten it back up a bit. And I think that's good right there. So basically the way you check them is you just spin the roller stationary, and if it spins in one spot pretty easily, and not too tight, you should be good. So all of mine feel really good and the bed doesn't wobble. So we're gonna go back and forth and see, make sure everything is smooth and everything feels perfect. You just want them to be barely tight enough around the channel where the bed is not loose. So now that we check that, now we can check our belt right here. It's actually pretty good. It's a little bit on the tighter side and we can adjust it here on the front with this knob. We're gonna loosen it a bit, tighten it just a little bit more after that and that's pretty good right there. So on the belts, you wanna be you know, a little looser than tighter but you guys can see it's just slight tightness and you don't wanna play music. If you hear music, you're probably too tight. So, But if you do hear something, it needs to be a very, very low note. So, But you can adjust this as you print to see how it affects your print and loosen and tighten it from there. So, Same thing for the X axis. We got the belt tensioner here and we wanna tension that just a little bit. So be careful not to over tension because you can't feel over here what's happening. So you need to touch the belt and see how tight it is. So here it looks like we were pretty close also. I think I'll leave it right there. And so on our hot end, we have two rollers on top and one on the bottom. So the one on the bottom is adjustable and the two on top are stationary. So here on mine, they're adjusted perfectly. You guys can see I can spin it quite easy, the rollers, and at the same time, it's not wobbling. So basically you wanna get just the perfect tension where it's grabbing, but not too tight, because if it's too tight, it's gonna kinda of bounce around and jitter, because the rollers will be too compressed, and if it's too loose, it'll wobble. And so the adjustable eccentric nut is right under there. So yeah, it's not too hard to figure out. Now we do also have rollers here on the outside. So the outer two are stationary, and then this one on the inside is adjustable. On mine, everything is actually pretty good. This one over here does seem a little tight. I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit. You definitely want to be looser than tighter on these two because we do have dual Z screws that keep both sides very linear as they go up. So it's not super important that these rollers are adjusted perfectly. And a lot of times you can't get them perfect anyways. So if they're close enough and not binding like crazy, just leave them, it should be good enough. And with that, we are done with the assembly and all the adjustments. 